Hey, what's up everybody, Retro Gaming Guy here. Today in this video, I'm gonna give you guys a crash course on how to create your very own retro video game emulation game drive. So there's lots of options out there for plug and play setups. And while I'm not against those by any means, it's very hard to find one that perfectly aligns with what you're looking for. Not everybody has the same tastes in video games. So of course, not everyone out there is going to be able to get one of those plug and play setups and find everything that they're looking for. So I always recommend setting up your own, even though it can be a very complicated process. So hopefully this video right here helps you navigate the process much smoother. And in all honesty, the way that I figured out how to do all of this is through trial and error. So finally, I figured out the best way and the best approach to go about doing this. And hopefully, I'll get, pass it on to you guys and you guys can have a more seamless experience. So first and foremost, I'm going to be using Botticera today to show you guys what the process is like over there. But we're going to first use one of these. This is an SSD. In fact, this is the Fick Watt one terabyte 2.5 inch SSD. This uses the SATA 3 6 gigabyte per second transfer interface and has a read and write speed of up to 550 megabytes per second. So absolutely amazing quality here, amazing performance on this. But what I really love about this brand too is the fact that they don't break your bank account. So if you look up SSDs online, you're likely going to find SSDs that vary in price point, but usually they're over a hundred bucks all the way up to several hundred dollars depending on the capacity. This is one terabyte. So with this specific SSD, you'll be able to add thousands of retro video games to your collection effortlessly. That's right, thousands of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to first flash Botticera to this. And in order to do so, we're going to need this product right here. This is a SATA to USB adapter. So this allows us to connect that drive over to our computer so we can actually flash Botticera onto it. And then we're also going to use that same adapter to connect our SSD with Botticera flash to it back over to our PC. And that's how we'll actually dive into our retro video game emulation setup today. Now you're also going to want to get yourself a USB flash drive like this one that I have right here. You're going to use this to actually bring over your ROMs and your BIOS files over to Botticera once we get everything set up on the SSD. So we're going to first unbox this. We're going to open it up and I'll show you exactly what, you know, everything includes within. So let's take a look at the actual SSD here. We have a user manual and here is our SSD. So 2.5 inches here, very compact. You could actually install this within a PC or use it externally as I'm going to do here in this video today. So we're going to first take our adapter. We're going to connect it just like this. And then this end is obviously USB. We're gonna plug this into our PC. All right, so again, I have my Watt SSD right here, ready to go, connected to my adapter. And all we're going to do from here is we're simply going to plug this into any USB connection on our PC. So you can see that connection has been established. I'll go ahead and set it down right here. And now we're going to dive into our computer and I'll show you guys exactly what the next step is. All right, guys, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our web browser. We're going to navigate over to Botticera.org, and we're going to go over to the Download tab. You can actually download it right here on the main page, but if you go over to the Download tab, you can actually download for the specific device that you are planning to set everything up with. Now, if you're going to be using a regular um, PC or laptop, desktop, computer, you're just going to go with the regular download right over here. So all we have to do for that is just simply go over to where it says Download up here and click download. It's going to automatically start the download process. You can see it up here currently downloading. Now at the time of this video, we are downloading Botticera version 38. So this is the current version right now. And you can see that right over here, the 38. So this is gonna do its thing. It says here about 10 minutes to fully download. So we'll let it do its thing and we'll come back here once it's complete. So now while that is still downloading, and you can see in the top right corner here, it is still downloading, we're going to look for Belena Etcher. So I'm gonna just type it into Google here, but you can certainly go to their website, which is etcher.belena.io. And what we'll do is we'll click on this. This is the Belena Etcher website, and we're gonna download this. This is an excellent tool for writing images because once we go ahead and we download Botticera, we're going to need something like the Belena Etcher to actually flash it onto our SSD. So I'm gonna simply click Download Etcher right here. This is my personal favorite, and you'll go ahead and download the version that works for whatever type of PC you're using. So today I'm on a Windows 11 PC. We'll go ahead with the top option here. 
we'll open up the uh, download option there and you can see it's already downloading up here. It should only take about two or three minutes to fully download and then we'll walk through the setup process from there. And right now it's slowing down our Botticera download, but that should still take around, you know, at the absolute most about 15 minutes or so. So we'll let both of these download and we'll jump right back into this. So once we open up Elena Etcher, we're gonna get our license agreement. We're just gonna go ahead and hit, I agree. It's gonna start installing everything for us right here. And there we go, that's all we have to do. We can go ahead and X this out until Botticer fully downloads, and then we'll jump back in here to write the image to our SSD. Come on. All right, so Botticer has just fully downloaded over here. So we can actually close out everything on our screen. And what we're going to do now is we're gonna open up Balena Etcher. We still have our SSD connected to our PC via the SATA to USB connection cable. So what we're gonna do now is over here, we're going to click this blue button that says flash from file, and we're going to now locate our Botticera file. So we'll go over to downloads. Here it is right here, Botticera uh, version 38. We'll double click on that. Now this is an image file. I haven't unzipped it or done anything there, leaving it exactly as I downloaded it from Botticera's website. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on select target here, and we're going to make sure that we select the drive that we want to flash our Botticera image to. So in this case, it's going to be our FICWAT one terabyte SSD, which you can see right here. If you have multiple things attached to your PC, which I actually have a 256 gigabyte micro SD card attached to my PC currently, just make sure that you select the proper um, drive. So in this case, again, it's that one terabyte SSD. So we'll simply hit select. So we can double check everything, Botticera image. We're going to be flashing it over to our one terabyte SSD. All we have to do now is click on the flash button right here. So we'll click flash. It's gonna give us a warning, just basically telling us that we're going to overwrite or erase everything that's currently on that drive. Since this is a fresh drive, it's not a concern at all. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click, click on yes, I'm sure. And it's gonna start the process here. So this, in this case, because I'm on Windows, it's going to say, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? I'll just confirm yes. And it's gonna start the process here. So this process shouldn't take long at all. We'll actually ride this process out right here. So you can see it's already flashed up to 30%. So we have an ETA of about 15 seconds for this portion of the process, which is the flashing portion. Now it's gonna validate, it should take about 25 seconds here. Speeds will depend on what type of SSD you're using, or um, of course, what type of PC you're using and the specs of it and whatnot. And once it validates, it's just gonna finish everything up for you. And there you go, you should get this right here, which says flash completed, one successful target. That means that you successfully wrote Botticera onto your SSD. So we can X out everything here. All right, so the next portion of this process is we need to go ahead and download both ROMs as well as our BIOS files so we could bring those over into our Botticera SSD. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our USB flash drive over to our PC. You can hear the confirmation that I just connected that over. And we're gonna actually navigate over to archive.org. I always find that archive.org has the most reliable BIOS files for Botticera. So we're gonna go over to the search bar. We're gonna type in Botticera 38 BIOS. And if you're using a different version of Botticera, say you're watching this video you know, a year down the road, then just go in and type in Botticera and whatever version you just downloaded. BIOS and it should pop right up. So over here, there's a bunch of different options for us. I like to go with what has the most views. And um, this one over here, I actually looked at earlier from BIOS Bob. This one I believe has an issue. So I'm gonna go over here to this one um, by the Mini Cake TV, which is also a YouTube channel. And what we're gonna do over here is we're going to go over to the right hand side and you'll see that we have a bunch of different ways that we can actually download this. 
all I'm going to do is I'm gonna download the zip file here. So I'm going to go in here and I'll go with the full pack BIOS right here. We'll go ahead and download that. And this entire download should take about five minutes or so. You can see it's already counting down quite quickly. So we'll let it do its thing here. And I'll show you what we need to do once this is fully downloaded. Now you can see this is counting down pretty quickly. So I'm gonna tell you guys one thing that you should do is I like to unzip these. So you're going to want something to unzip these with. I actually like 7-Zip. That's the most reliable, in my opinion, software to unzip files and folders with. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go over to Google and I'm just gonna type in 7-Zip here because actually I'm on a new computer today and I don't believe that I've even downloaded this yet. So we'll go over to the 7-Zip website, which is 7-zip.org. I'm gonna go up here to the top and just click download for the 60-bit, uh, excuse me, 64-bit version for Windows. You can see really quick process here, downloading 7-Zip. We'll just go ahead and open up the file here to complete the installation. It's going to say, do you want to allow this app to make um, changes to your device? We'll go ahead and hit yes. And we're just simply going to click install. And you can use other software as well. I just prefer 7-Zip. I've had just always a great experience with 7-Zip. So we'll hit close once that's completed. We can X this out. And over here, because we were downloading something else, it slowed down the process a little bit, but we got about two minutes left on our BIOS file download. So we'll come back here once it's complete. All right, guys, so everything just fully downloaded here for our BIOS pack. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to File Explorer. We're gonna navigate over to Downloads. Here right at the top, you can see our BIOS folder and it's a zipped folder here for um, our BIOS files. So because we have 7-Zip on here, we can simply highlight it, right click, go down to show more options, and you should have the 7-Zip tab here. We're gonna go over and just click on extract files. We'll confirm it with okay, and it's gonna extract all of our BIOS files here. And now over here under downloads, you can see we have our unzipped version. So what we're gonna do now is we'll double click on this. We can double click again here, and you can actually take all of these folders here, right click, go down to show more options, and click copy. Now you're gonna locate your flash drive. I have a Samsung USB flash drive plugged into my PC, so I'll locate it over here. And now in here, I actually have three folders already, so I'll just make note of those, but I'm gonna simply right click. I'm gonna to go to show more options and I'm gonna click on paste. It's gonna bring all of those folders we just copied from our BIOS pack directly into our flash drive and we'll be able to now take our flash drive and bring it over to our Botticera SSD and dump everything within there once we boot into the SSD. So sounds a little more complicated than it actually is. We'll just let this complete here and we are one step closer to ending up with a nicely put together game drive in the end. All right, so you can see everything got added in here. And if we jump into, we're in our flash drive still. If we go into our BIOS folder, you can see everything is laid out within here. So we are good to go here. So now the next part of this process is you're going to want to locate and download your ROM files. So you'll go in and you'll look for any of the games that you're looking for, for any of the collections that are available on Botticera. So anything basically from early Atari all the way through PS3, you could get up and running on Botticera. So you can use Google to locate ROMs. You can jump on a wide range of different websites. I'm not gonna provide you guys with direct links or anything like that in this video because that certainly does get a little bit controversial. So once you locate your ROMs, you're gonna download them. Some you need to extract, some you don't need to extract. Botticera's website is a great resource for telling you exactly what type of ROM files to use for each of your collections. And in fact, oftentimes inside of your um, folders for these collections in Botticera itself, there's a info page in there that you could double click on. And oftentimes it will give you information as to what type of ROM files to use for each specific collection. So I'm gonna add a bunch of different ROMs to my flash drive here. We're going to jump over to my PC and I'm gonna show you guys how to boot up into Botticera on our SSD that we already set up. All right guys, so I have everything shut down on my PC. I'm gonna grab my FICWAT one terabyte SSD now via the SATA to USB connection. I'm gonna plug that into my PC 
And now we're going to fire on the PC. And as soon as we power this PC on, we're going to hit escape or F10 on our keyboard. Different PCs require different buttons to access your BIOS in order to change your boot order. So for me, I'm going to be hitting the escape key on my keyboard as soon as I power this on. So I'm powering this on. I'm just gonna keep hitting escape right here and you're gonna see what pops up on screen. All right, so now that you have plugged in your SSD via the USB SATA connection to your PC and hit escape multiple times, you should pop up on a window that looks something like this. Now, it may look slightly different, but it should be laid out very similar to this. In fact, if you've hit escape a ton of times, it might even look something like this. If that's the case, just hit escape one more time. That little window will remove itself. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna navigate over to boot across the top with our arrow key. So I'm just gonna hit arrow key right. I'm gonna highlight boot. And now down here under boot options, boot option number one is always gonna be your Windows boot manager. That is your internal SSD or hard drive that's running Windows. Now, right below that, you're gonna see UEFIOS. And it says for me, Sovereign in parentheses because that is the brand of my USB SATA connection cable, uh, or adapter rather. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight UEFI OS. That is our, in this case, it's my FICWAT one terabyte SSD with Vodacera on it. So we're gonna highlight this, we're gonna hit enter, and then it opens up this window right here. We're simply going to move that UEFI OS up one. So we'll bring it up here. Now we're highlighting Windows Boot Manager. We're gonna just hit enter, and notice how now boot option number one is our UEFI OS. So now what we'll do is, with our arrow key right, we're gonna navigate over to save and exit. We're gonna hit enter, and we're gonna confirm this with yes. This is going to save those changes, and it's going to reboot us right into Botticera. So we'll go ahead and hit enter, and get into Botticera now. All right, guys, so you can see that we are now booted up right into Botticera. Now, this is stock Botticera. So inside here, you're going to get just a couple titles um, that are not copyrighted or anything like that. So you can see the collections that populate in here by default. So what we are going to do now is we are going to hit F1 on our keyboard. This is going to bring us into our file system over here. And now we're going to take that flash drive with our BIOS files and hopefully with ROM files on it. And we're gonna insert that flash drive into our PC via USB, of course. So give it a moment or so to register in there. There you can see on the left-hand column that it has registered. As I open this up, you can see I've added in a few different collections with ROMs. So if I go into Dreamcast, you can see I've added some ROMs in here. Same with N64, I've added a lot of N64 ROMs because each title doesn't take up much space in terms of gigabytes. So now what we're going to do is we are gonna locate those folders that we downloaded from the BIOS pack. So we had system, we had saves, we had uh, ROMs was one of them, which we can go ahead and put that in there, even though I'm not too worried about that one personally. And then of course, BIOS. So there should be four of them here. All we're gonna do is we're gonna simply right click and we're gonna click on copy. Now we're gonna go over here, because currently we're in our Samsung flash drive. We're gonna go up here to where it says share. We're gonna click on share, and you'll notice that we have BIOS here, we have ROMs here, we have a uh, system here, and we also have saves here. So we're gonna simply right click, we're gonna click paste, and it's gonna overwrite all of these as long as we prompt it to do so. So right here it says, apply this option to all existing files because it's asking us if we want to basically overwrite what's already here because there's already folders named, you know, what these new folders are named. So we're just gonna overwrite everything. Should be a very quick process here. You can see it's only taken me about five seconds to do so. So we'll let this do its thing here. And we're going to verify this by going into our BIOS folder right here now. Now you can see all of our BIOS files are located within here. So what we can do now is if you have ROMs on your flash drive, go ahead and locate those. So for example, Dreamcast, one of my favorite collections. I'm gonna double click on Dreamcast and I'm going to actually copy all of these ROMs. I'm going to right click now, hit copy. I'm gonna go over here on the left-hand column now to my ROMs folder and I'm gonna locate Dreamcast in here. And this is where you'll find all of your different 
collection folders. So we have 3DS right here, for example, Game Gear right here, GameCube over here. Everything's in alphabetical order, so you can very easily locate everything. So we just highlighted, um, or excuse me, we just copied Dreamcast. So let me locate Dreamcast, should be right here. And you can see currently, there's nothing in here. We have no ROMs for Dreamcast on this setup. And if we double click on info, it will actually tell us the types of ROM extensions that we want for each collection. And every single collection has this information available. So we'll go ahead and just quit that because we don't need that. I know I have the right ones. So I'm gonna simply right click, click paste. And now all of those that I copied from my flash drive are going to paste right in here. So it's gonna take about two minutes or so, give or take. So we'll let this do its thing. We'll come back once it's complete. All right, guys, you can see how all of our Dreamcast ROMs are now located in our Dreamcast ROM folder here on Botticera. So we'll go back over to our Samsung flash drive. And I also added in some GameCube over here. So I'll double click on GameCube. I'll highlight all of these, right click, copy all of these. I'll go back over to my ROMs folder here in Botticera. I'll locate GameCube and inside the GameCube ROM, again, there's no ROMs currently. So we'll right click, we'll click on paste and all of these are gonna get added in. And this one's only gonna take about a minute and a half, give or take. So we'll do the same thing here. We'll let this one uh, go. All right, and here we go. GameCube has been added in. So we'll go back over to our flash drive. And what else did I add in here? I added some PS2. Actually, let's do N64. I have literally my entire N64 collection here ready to go. I'll copy this. Back over to ROMs on Botticera. We'll locate N64. There it is, same deal, it's empty right now. We'll paste this in, no longer empty, and this is a very quick one. Takes literally 15 seconds or so to do all 3.4 gigabytes of tons and tons of N64 ROMs. In fact, how many do I have in here? Let's see if I can see how many there are. 180 items here, so 180 games added literally just as quick as 15, 20 seconds at the most. So back over to flash drive, we're gonna go into PS2. I only have a handful of PS2 titles in here. Copy those, back over to ROMs. We'll drop into PS2 over here. There it is, hiding in the corner, paste in here. And uh, this one's gonna take about a minute and a half. All right, and PS2 is all done. We'll go back over here, and I think I had one more collection if I'm not mistaken. We'll go over here to Xbox. I believe this is the last one here. We've got just a handful of Xbox titles. I'll copy these, go back over to ROMs. Xbox is down towards the bottom. Double click there, empty, but we'll paste in this. We'll paste in these couple titles here. It's gonna take about 40 seconds or so. There we go, those titles are added in. We're gonna go over to file. We're gonna close this window. So we're back out to Botticera now. So what we need to do is we need to open up our main menu. So if you have your keyboard, you can hit the space bar. I'm gonna hit the space bar here. I'm gonna to go to game settings. I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm gonna hit the first option at the top which says update games lists. Because if I back out, you can see none of those collections have populated in. There's no GameCube, there's no N64, there's no Xbox, there's no PS2. So again, we'll open this up, game settings, update games lists, and we're gonna confirm with yes by hitting enter. Simple as that. It updates everything very quickly. And now take a look. We have Dreamcast. There's all of our titles. We have PS2. There's all of our titles. We have over here Xbox. There's all of our titles. So everything is looking really good now. So I'm going to give you guys just a quick little bit of information here on how you can make this a much more visually pleasing setup. Because this is pretty basic. I mean, it's cool. It's a nice layout. But we can make it better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit main menu here with our space bar on our keyboard. We're gonna first connect to Wi-Fi. So we're gonna go into network settings, we'll hit enter. We're going to, you can see, not connected, not connected for internet status. Go down here to where it says enable Wi-Fi, hit enter. That's gonna turn everything on. It's gonna take a few seconds to update this. And now we'll go down to Wi-Fi SSID and I'm gonna locate my Wi-Fi. I'm gonna go ahead and enter my password. So I blocked out my password uh, screen there, but 
That's all we have to do. I've entered in my Wi-Fi SSID. I've entered in my Wi-Fi key. And now you'll notice there's no enter button here. So what we need to do is we need to highlight back. We're gonna hit enter on the back button. It's gonna take a couple seconds before it knocks us out to the previous screen. And what it's doing right now is it's establishing that Wi-Fi connection. And here we go, it says Wi-Fi enabled. We'll hit OK. If we go back into network settings, now it says connected right here. We have our IP address. Um, and this is not an IP address where we have to worry about privacy or anything like that. So I'm not concerned to show you guys my IP address. We'll back out. And now what you can do is we can go into updates and downloads here. We'll hit enter on our keyboard. We're gonna go to themes, second option down. We'll hit enter. And now it's gonna give us all of these different options that we can download for themes. And they will download directly to our SSD. So if you're a Star Wars fan, there's a Star Wars theme right here. Lots of really cool stuff. There's some comic book themes. They all look really cool. They're all laid out very nicely. Some are more you know, interesting than others, but this one from Hursty, I actually know Hursty and he does amazing work. Some of the best stuff comes from him. So we can scroll down and these update typically with um, every version of Bodicera, you'll usually get a few more themes that you can add to the mix. Some more Star Wars down here. There's a Tron one. And then we'll go back up to the top. So I'm going to download my favorite one, which is Artflix. All we have to do is hit enter. Hit enter again to install. You can see your progress up in the top right corner. It says it's downloading one of one. Um, so we can actually X out of this right now by hitting escape. So I'll just back out and the download progress progress is going to stay present in that top right corner. So we can go about our business doing whatever we want on here. One more thing I want to show you guys is if we go into Dreamcast, notice how everything is just a blank little cartridge icon and it just gives us the text name. Not too exciting. So what we want to do here is you want to set up Screen Scraper. Now the process for setting up Screen Scraper is a little bit involved. I'm going to provide you guys with a link at the top of your screen to my tutorial on how to set up Screen Scraper. But I'm going to do it off camera really quickly because I don't want to make this video any longer than it has to be. Um, and I'll show you guys exactly what you can end up with once you set up Screen Scraper and you actually scrape all of the data for each of your collections. So actually it just said that our theme downloaded. So what we can do now is we'll go to our main menu. We'll go down to user interface settings. We'll hit enter there. And now theme set, we have access to Artflix. So I'm gonna simply select Artflix here. I'm gonna hit escape to back out and it loads right in. So this is the theme Artflix and it looks way cooler in my opinion. But again, if we go in here, there's absolutely still no graphics or videos or anything like that for our titles. It's just simply a text list. So again, I'm gonna set up Screen Scraper off camera and I'm gonna show you guys what you can get, everything looking like with Screen Scraper. All right guys, so I just went through and I scraped everything. So now as we go through our different collections, you can see the layout on this particular theme. But if we want to dive into each collection now, you're gonna see a lot more information. We no longer just have that text list. We now have logos, we have video previews, we have box art, we have a description of each title. So you can see as I go down each one, it's very easy to navigate. It looks visually appealing, very well polished, just super easy to go in here and make selections. And in my opinion, it just ties everything together nicely. So we'll jump out of this collection. We'll jump into GameCube over here. You can see how GameCube looks can scroll through all of our different titles we get the video preview and we also get a um we also get audio for each of the video previews as well i just have everything muted right now for the sake of the video so just looks absolutely amazing we can go down here let's take a look at ps2 same deal for ps2 just really ties everything together perfectly so in order to launch a title you'll just simply grab your controller and once you line up with like if i want to launch time crisis crisis zone I would just simply line up with that selection and I can either hit enter on my keyboard or just hit my A or X button on my controller and I'd be able to dive right in and launch this title. It doesn't get any easier than using Bodicera on an external or internal SSD. All right guys, you can see exactly how easy it is to set up your own retro video game emulation game drive and you don't have to go out and spend a fortune on a plug and play pre-configured setup anymore. Obviously those do save you a ton of time. There's no denying that but you oftentimes get thousands and thousands of games 
that you don't even end up diving into. Most of us end up playing just a handful of titles in the end. So having a drive with 50,000 or 100,000 games generally ends up being pretty useless. So with this right here, this thick watt, uh, two terabyte SSD, you don't have to spend a fortune. It is only $42 for that. And I can get thousands and thousands of games on my setup thanks to this product right here. So definitely check this out. It's reliable, it's affordable. It really is a exceptional option for SSDs and they're much faster than hard drives. And obviously if you do have to go out and you have to get yourself a SATA to USB uh, adapter, they're only like 12 bucks on Amazon. And most of us I think already have USB flash drives. If you do have to get one, you can get them for like 10 or 20 bucks on Amazon as well. So I'll provide links to everything in the description of this video. Uh, click through, get some additional information at the very least, and hopefully this crash course on setting up a game drive for retro video game emulation served you well and made the process a little bit easier to at least understand and to navigate. So let me know what you guys thought of the video in the comment section below. Be sure to give me a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed the content today and you found this information helpful. And of course, hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.